Hello everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to this year's BMAT revision series. Similar to previous series in previous years, this series is going to get you as prepared as you can be for your BMAT exam. Today we're going to focus on BMAT section one top tips. And I'll give you four or five fantastic tips that if you follow, will help you score above the rest of the pack and get the higher of the BMAT scores. Remember, if you're applying to universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, you need to make sure to get consistently high scores across all of the sections, section one, section two, and section three. Before I continue, I'd like to say thank you very much to Medify for making this video possible. I strongly suggest that you go and check out their online question bank, which has got questions split apart depending on their topic. For section one, they've got critical thinking and problem solving. Then for section two, they've got questions split apart into maths, biology, chemistry, and physics. So if you have a particularly weak section, then go check out the question bank and practice, practice, practice. With this video, I'm giving away one free BMAT Medify pass. So if you want to have the chance of winning it, then like this video, subscribe to my channel, go follow me on Instagram, and then on my latest Instagram post, comment, what do you think the greatest discovery in medicine has been in the last 100 years? So go do that now. The winner of this giveaway will be announced in 24 hours, and then one of you will be a winner of a BMAT Medify Pass. I've got more of these giveaways coming out soon, so subscribe and make sure to keep up to date. So my first tip for section one to do as well as you can is to read the question carefully. A lot of the time, the question in section one gives away exactly what you need to do. And given that we've got 32 questions to do in 60 minutes, we're going to be in a huge rush. And so it's so easy to skim over the question and miss out a few of the key parts. And so this is going to be a very simple and rather obvious tip. But if you read the question slowly and a good two times, then you can pick up on the key things they want you to do. When it comes to reading the question, an even more effective strategy could be to read the question once, then read the paragraph or look through the data, and then read the question again to put into context again the data or the paragraph, as well as reminding you of what exactly you should be thinking about to get that question correct. A link to my first tip is my second tip. Understand the question. You've read the question, you've read the paragraph, you've read the question again. But it's so important to you know what sort of question this is and what this question is asking you to do. There are two main types of questions in section one, critical thinking and problem solving. And so what I really suggest you do is set some time apart and work out the different types of critical thinking questions they can ask you. Are they asking you to find the strongest argument for something? Are they asking you to find the strongest flaw in an argument? Work out the different types of critical thinking questions there are and do the same for problem solving as well. And by doing this, what you'll be able to do in the exam is quickly work out which sort of question they're asking you, allowing you to quickly pounce on the question using the specific skill set that you need to get that question correct. There are loads of resources in Google, so quickly search it up and make a list of the different types of questions you can get for section one under the brackets of critical thinking and problem solving. This is so, so important, and I wish I had done it back when I was revising. I didn't know about this, and so I didn't do it. But in hindsight, it's a really, really useful tip. Now, the third tip is improve your skimming skills once again. A lot of you will have done the UCAT, and so for verbal reasoning, you'll have developed really good skimming skills, cutting out the fluff whilst you're reading and looking out for key words. Now, in addition to reading key words, I know some people say generally it's really important to pay particular attention to the beginning and ending sentences of a paragraph, but I'd say in the BMAT, the paragraphs themselves aren't too long. And so ideally, you want to understand the whole paragraph in good detail, as opposed to you know focusing on the beginning and the end of the paragraph. When skimming, look out for keywords, but also things that might make a statement negative, counteracting statements, things that might turn the argument on its head within a matter of a few lines. Those are the fishy ones that catch everybody out. And the fourth main tip for BMAT section one is to not be thrown off by numbers. BMAT calculations, just like in the UCAT quantitative reasoning questions, don't involve very difficult maths. Arguably, the math in here is no more than bid maths or bod maths, whatever you were taught. A few brackets, a few indices, a bit of division, a bit of multiplication, addition and subtraction. Maybe in section two, things get a bit different, but in section one, roughly, this is what you're limited to. So in the problem solving questions, follow the previous tips I've given you. And then in addition, don't fret out when you see the numbers, just make sure you find the relevant numbers and literally do some number crunching and you'll be fine. The key thing to remember is being very careful when doing calculations manually. Remember, there's no calculator for the BMAT, unlike in the UCAT, where you do have a calculator. So your ability to do mental math and do math written down must be improved over the next few weeks. Get really good at column multiplication and long division and manipulating fractions. Those things will really help you out for the math that comes up in section one. The last key tip for section five, and this is a bit of a personal one, is 
don't try and get every single question correct. Out of the 32 questions, there will be five or six questions which are going to be very, very hard. And when you come across these super hard questions, don't spend three, four minutes trying to answer them. They are not high yield and they are a waste of your time. Think about it. If you ignore these six super hard questions and do the remaining 26 questions perfectly, then you're going to end up with 26 out of 32. Now that's a pretty good score. Instead, if you get flustered and you spend too much time on these five, six hard questions, you might get two of those five, six questions correct, but then of the 26 other questions you have, you might have made four or five mistakes because you've guessed some of them. We haven't had as much time. And these questions might have been quite easy. And so think about it. You've only got three of the hard questions right, and then you've got about 19, 20 of the easier questions right, and so you only end up with a score of 22 or something out of 32. So the marginal gains come by knowing which questions are going to be super hard and time consuming, leaving those out and answering the easier questions that come afterwards and then come back and finish the hard questions off and try and at least make an educated guess. Now you guys are lucky, they've removed data handling and inference, which is amazing, but also they've reduced the number of questions in section one from I think 37 to 32 questions without reducing the time. You still have 60 minutes of section one. So you roughly have two minutes per question, which I think is quite a luxury. Anyway, hopefully this video was useful. If you did like it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with future BMAT videos, along with the study with me videos that I'll be publishing, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Before I end, once again, thank you so much to Medify for making this video possible. Go and check out the giveaway that I'm doing, but also their fantastic question bank. The link is in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys soon in the next video.